This is No One From Nowhere, and you are, and I am, a Spirit of God. Today I want to talk to you about the Anunnaki Gods War versus the Demi Gods, Enlil, Inki, and the Ajiji. The Anunnaki from heaven to earth came down from Nibiru some 450,000 years ago to mine gold for Nibiru's dwindling atmosphere. According to the Atrahasis myth, the lower ranking gods were put to work by the senior gods, the Anunnaki. When the gods, manlike, bore the labor, carried the load, the gods' load was great, the toil grievous, the trouble excessive, the great Anunnaki, the seven, were making the Ijiji undertake the toil. The Ajiji are the gods of heaven, and they are from Nibiru. This is a collective term like the Anunnaki for a group of assorted but otherwise nameless gods. Some believe they may have been the underworld gods, and the Anunnaki are the celestial gods, which they are because they are each named after planets. The Ajiji's number on earth may have been as high as 300, according to one myth called the Akkadian Tale of Atrahasis, which is the biblical name of Noah. The Ajiji were a subservant of the Anunnaki gods and were forced to do hard labor by the Anunnaki. After 40 periods, or shars, i.e., a shar is 3,600 earth years. The Ajiji had had enough and staged a rebellion or otherwise the first known sit-down strike. The Ajiji were going to kill Enlil. The Etrahasis epic, a full-fledged earth chronicle, which records the events that had led to the creation of of Homo sapiens, man or human being as we know them. The text informs us that King Anu had gone back to Nibiru and earth was divided between Enlil and Inki. The Ajiji toiled in the mines of the Absu for 40 counted periods or 144,000 earth years. But the work was difficult and backbreaking. Inside the mountains, in the deeply cut shafts, the Ajiji suffered the toil. Excessive was their toil for 40 counted periods. The mining operations deep inside the earth were never interrupted. The Ajiji suffered the toil day and night. But as the shafts grew deeper and the toil harsher, dissatisfaction grew. They were complaining, backbiting, grumbling in the excavations. To help maintain discipline, Enlil sent Ninurta to the Absu, but this strained relations with Inki even more. It was then that Enlil decided to go to the Absu and personally evaluate the situation. The discontented Anunnaki Ajiji seized the opportunity to mutiny. The Atrahasis Chronicle, in language as vivid as that of a modern reporter, in more than 150 lines of text, unambiguously describes the events that followed, how the rebellious Ajiji put their tools on fire, and in the middle of the night, marched on Enlil's dwelling. How some shouted, Let us kill him. Let us break the yoke. How an unnamed leader reminded them that Enlil was the chief officer of old time and advised negotiations. And how Enlil, enraged, took up his weapons, but he too was reminded by his chamberlain, My lord, 
These are your sons. As Enlil remained a prisoner in his own quarters, he sent a message to King Anu and asked that he come to earth. When Anu arrived, the great Ajiji and Anunnaki assembled for a court-martial. Inki, ruler of the Abzu, was also present. Enlil demanded to know who the instigator of the mutiny was, calling for a death penalty. Not getting the support of King Anu, Enlil offered his resignation. Noble one, he said to Anu, take away the office, take away the power, to heaven will I ascend with you. But Anu, calming Enlil, also expressed understanding of the miner's hardships. Encouraged Inki opened his mouth and addressed the gods, repeating Anu's summation. He had had a solution to offer, while the chief medical officer, their sister, Ninhursag, was here in the Absu with them. Let her create a primitive worker, and let him bear the yoke. Let the workers carry the toil of the gods. Let him bear the yoke. In the following 100 lines of the Atrahasis text, and in several other creation of man texts, there have been discovered in various states of preservation the tale of the genetic engineering of Homo sapiens, and has been told in amazing detail. To achieve the feat, Inky suggested that a being that already exists, ape woman, be used to create the Lulu Amela, the mixed worker, by binding upon less evolved beings, the mold of the gods. The goddess Ninhursag purified the essence of a young male Anunnaki. She mixed it into the egg of an ape woman. The fertilized egg was then implanted in a womb of a female Anunnaki for a required period of pregnancy. When the mixed creature was born, Ninhursag lifted up, lifted him up, and shouted, I have created, my hands have made it. The primitive worker, i.e. Homo sapiens, had come into the beginning some 300,000 years ago. It came about through a feat of genetic engineering and embryo implant techniques, which mankind itself is beginning to employ. If it wasn't for the AGG having a rebellion, we wouldn't even be here. I also want to point out that it's very important to note that according to Wikipedia, the Aji, I-G-I, means I in the Sumerian language, and the G, G-I, stands for to penetrate with sexual behavior. Therefore, they actually be translated to eyes in the sky or the watchers in the book of Enoch. I take you to Enoch 6, 1 through 7. And it came to pass when the sons of men had increased, that in those days there were born to them fair and beautiful daughters. And the angels, the sons of heaven, saw them and desired them. And they said to one another, Come, let us choose for ourselves wives from the children of men, and let us beget for ourselves children. And Simyaza, who was their leader, said to them, I fear that you may not wish this deed to be done, and that I alone will pay for this great sin. And they all answered him, and said, Let us swear an oath, and bind one another with curses. So not to alter this plan, but to carry out this plan effectively. Then they all swore together and bound one another with curses to it. And they were in all 200, and they came down on Adris, which is the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called the mountain Hermon, because on it they swore and bound another with curses. Also, Mount Hermon is known as Mount Sinai in Egypt, 
or the Mount of Moses, where Moses received the Ten Commandments. Thank you so much for listening, and always remember that God loves you, and so do I, because you are, and I am, a Spirit of God. In Jesus' name.